So I've come across some really interesting, almost amazing uh, studies in, uh, in recent times on the topic of coffee and cancer and uh, other diseases. And um, some of this information I got out of the, the new 2019 uh, DeVita Cancer Textbook. It's a 2400 page book and in that book there's one paragraph that for me was actually worth the cost of the book. It's, it's uh, written by Walter Willett who is a professor at Harvard and in that paragraph they run down all the different cancers that are uh, that the incidence uh, is decreased by consuming coffee. Um, and I'll get into in a moment get into how they how coffee should be prepared in order to maximize the uh, anti-cancer effect. But the list of cancers uh, that where the the uh, occurrence rate or the recurrence rate of the cancer is uh, diminished by coffee intake is really quite amazing. Uh, I think probably the strongest effect is in liver cancer, and we know that when people drink. Um, a relatively high amount of coffee, which would be three or four cups per day. Uh, they have a reduction in the incidence of liver cancer by about 50%. And it also prevents or, uh, well, I guess you'd say prevents um, cirrhosis of the liver and it uh, normalizes abnormal enzymes, which is a sign of liver damage. But that wasn't all. I mean, a, there's a very similar effect in end, endometrial cancer, uterine uh, cancer, and in melanoma, in rectal cancer, uh, and in a moment I'll talk about prostate cancer. So this is really, <laughs> I mean, and he gives the documentation for this. Um, elsewhere in the DeVita book, there's nothing but negativism about coffee. I don't know what it is, but this topic really, really seems to bring out a lot of negativity in a lot of people. If they, if they decided that in their life they were not going to drink coffee or they disapprove of coffee, uh, you know, they look for the negatives. And sure, there are a couple of things you have to watch for. Of course, everybody, even children know that coffee will keep you up, uh, you know, it can lead to insomnia if you drink it too late in the day and so forth. And for some people it will upset the stomach. So I'm not saying that you could just drink endless amounts of coffee and not expect some, some negative uh, repercussions. But in terms of cancer, it's really shaping up to look like three or four cups of coffee per day are, is highly protective against different kinds of cancer. The two studies that impressed me the most, one of them was a, was a study uh, in, in terms of um, prostate cancer, uh, and this was an Italian study, and in that, in that study there was something like a 50 to 60 percent uh, reduction in prostate cancer in the men or well, of course it would be men for prostate cancer, but in the men who um, uh, drank the highest amount, which would be four cups, and uh, and compared to those who didn't uh, drink or drank very little coffee, so this is a, you know extraordinary. I mean, look at the savings in human lives and suffering that's implied in that. Now that's Italian coffee. This was a study done in Italy, and it was uh, specifically about espresso or what they call mocha uh, and the different drinks that are made from espresso type coffee which would be uh, macchiato, cappuccino of course uh, and uh, other mixtures of coffee and, and milk but whatever it was if you got the right amount you, you got the, uh, the, this tremendous benefit in terms of, of prostate cancer and uh, so that raises the question of um, how do you, what's the best way to prepare coffee? Now, in, uh, in Italy, almost all coffee is done through this press method where you press hot water through the coffee under pressure. And that's why they, we, they have the name espresso, which means pressed. In America and, and some other countries, coffee is usually filtered. You, draw, you, draw, you, um, you pour the water through a, usually a paper filter 
or of course uh, you could use a metal filter and uh, that filters out most of the solids of the coffee and that would include some of the beneficial elements as well so it seems as if the the good stuff is being filtered out uh, while, while you're doing that kind of uh, filtration process. So uh, a more likely thing would be to use a French press or uh, one of these Italian coffee makers. Probably if you use a metal mesh filter instead of a paper filter you get more of the Ing the, the, the beneficial ingredients, which are like antioxidants. Um, there's a particular name for these, cowiol and cafestrol, but it's, it's not important. The point is that these are, this is where the action is. This is where the, where the benefit is. It really, um, it really amazes me, though, how, um, you know, when you look into, you look in the medical literature, I mean, the actual articles, and you find a tremendous amount of positive data about, um, about coffee. You look in the public arena and you get a lot of people complaining about the danger of coffee. In particular, you might, if you look up the topic of unfiltered coffee, you'll find a lot of people saying it causes heart attacks or heart disease. But what they really mean is that there, there, are, there was one study uh, in Holland about 20 years ago that showed that there was a rise in homocysteine, uh, which is a kind of undesirable amino acid. And that may, a coffee, unfiltered coffee, makes the homocysteine level go up. Then they extrapolate from that to say, well, this is going to raise your cholesterol, total cholesterol. Then they extrapolate from that to say, well, if it, if it raises your total cholesterol, that's going to give you a heart attack. It'll make you more prone to a heart attack. There's a lot of steps in that process. And it really, first of all, I looked up that, that article. I read the whole article. And the level of homocysteine was not elevated above the normal. So yes, it went up a little bit, but it wasn't above the normal. Secondly, they don't say what kind of cholesterol uh, they're talking about. They talk about total cholesterol, but that, of course, as we now know, could mean the so-called good cholesterol, the HDL. Thirdly, not everybody believes that cholesterol is an important um, factor towards uh, causing heart attacks. I'm not, I'm really not a believer of that myself. And if you just look up cholesterol skeptics on the internet, you'll get a, an, an earful or an eyeful uh, in terms of uh, reasons not to believe that cholesterol is very important in terms of heart disease. The other point is that uh, if, if, unfiltered coffee really caused heart attack, we would expect Italy and countries like Italy, like France, <clears throat> excuse me, to have runaway epidemics of, uh, of heart attacks. France has, you probably have heard the French paradox, France has one of the lowest rates of heart disease in the world, uh, and yet they're drinking coffee like it's going out of style. And if you compare the country of Italy with, let's say, the country of Belarus, um, you find that the Italians drink about um, about five times as much coffee as the people in Belarus do, and they have about one tenth the rate of heart attacks as people in Belarus. So th there's no car. If you look at these, you, and I did this uh, the other night. Line up a chart of the frequency of heart heart cardiac deaths, country by country, and then line up the list of the, the uh, per capita consumption of coffee on the other side of the, uh, of the page, there's no correspondence between those two. So it would make me a little suspicious that, of course, there could be other things going on, smoking and so forth, but there really is no correspondence between those, those two things. Yeah, drinking a lot of coffee doesn't create heart attacks. If anything, it, it prevents heart attacks. It also is known for decreasing uh, the amount of blood sugar people have. So it's actually protective against type 2 diabetes. And that, uh, that may be the reason that you're getting, you know, less cancer. And that's actually suggested by Walter Willett in the DeVita textbook. So all in all, I think this is a very important topic. And uh, if you are up to it, uh, if, you're, if your doctor uh, agrees, if you need to, to talk to your doctor about this, then by all means try uh, to continue or increase your consumption of coffee and switch to a system 
that would have more of the solids uh, in the coffee. And that would be either the French press or the Italian espresso cappuccino or probably the metal filtration system instead of the paper filtration system. So uh, for Moss reports, this is Ralph Moss.